Next chapter is a sixty-five dollar product. The entire thing, everything I'm going to show you today is part of uh, Next Craft, and it's all included. Uh, it's downloadable from our website for sixty-five dollars. We sell a box copy like this for seventy-five dollars, so up to a thousand dollars, and sometimes beyond. And uh, you have to go to school to learn how to use them, and read a lot of books, and they just tend to be very complex because they're written for those audio engineers. Those, those highly paid people who sit at the mixing board and, and actually mix the music. But with Mixcraft, anyone can do any kind of recording at home. Uh, it's not expensive for the software, it's not expensive for the microphones or anything else you might want to use, and it's kind of fun. And uh, so let me just get right to it. One of the most powerful, powerful things about the newest version of Mixcraft, Mixcraft 4, which came out in January, is what's called virtual instrument technology. And this is a, a testament to just how powerful computers have, uh, have come these days. All of the music that I'm playing is coming from this track. This keyboard is a USB keyboard. It doesn't make any sound by itself. It has a single USB cable coming out of it that connects up to my laptop. And a keyboard like this costs about $120, $130. There's, uh, there's different kinds. Uh, I can switch to a piano. Got an organ set up. includes hundreds of different instrument sounds. Everything from orchestral sounds, uh, flutes and, and bells and trumpets, uh, to uh, synthesized sounds, to all kinds of bizarre and interesting sounds. So if I want saxophone, I just click on saxophone and I've got it. If I want some kind of Crazy synthesized tone. I've got access to it. So in the past, if you wanted to make these kinds of sounds and have this kind of uh, these kind of tones available for music, you would have to buy a professional keyboard. Uh, and they're made by companies like Roland and Korg, and they cost anywhere from $1,000 up to the top of the line. The cords are about $7,000. All of that same kind of sound quality and, and capabilities are built into Mixcraft. And uh, I'm just playing through some of the sounds, but I want to show you the, the level of control that you have. Uh, with the organ I was playing, this is actually a recreation of a classic Hammond organ uh, made in Chicago from the 1930s on through the uh, 80s and in fact it's still being made today. I can control every detail of the sound of this organ exactly as if I were sitting in front of an actual Hammond organ. And that includes the spinning speaker and the different kinds of tones that I can get. Everything that you can do on a physical Hammond organ, I can do in the software. A physical Hammond organ, if you have a Hammond B3, which is the classic Hammond organ, uh, they're about $4,000. They weigh 400 pounds. They're really hard to move and heavy, and they haven't been made since the 60s, so they kind of break down a lot. I have two of them in, in my house, so uh, I know how difficult they are to maintain. Uh, with this, it's all built into the software. You get the same quality of sound, the same control. And uh, it's visually perfect. It's always in tune. And you never have to worry about vacuum tubes breaking. Uh, we also have, this is our mini mode VA. It's a, it's a uh, recreation of classic Japanese synthesizer. Uh, early synthesizer music was all done on Moog synthesizers. Has anyone ever heard of a Moog synthesizer? All right, hey, great. Okay. Hear that. Dr. Robert Moog, he just died a few years ago. Uh, he invented 
the synthesizer, the idea of using the electronic to produce sounds. And uh, his most famous instrument is an instrument called the mini mode. And we have it modeled entirely in software, all the same controls, all the same kinds of sounds. Uh, a mini mode synthesizer costs about $2,500 if you can find one in good shape. And again, it's all included. We also have several uh, professional sample grand pianos. These are 250 megabyte grand pianos where every note of the piano was painstakingly uh, sampled and recorded and reproduced. So most professional music, when you go and you see a band on stage and they have a keyboard and they're playing, those keyboards, their pianos tend to take about 16 megabytes of memory, if that. And so in order to save memory, they take, uh, they take the recordings and they do some equality and they do some tricks to, to save memory. And it reduces the realism of the piano. With our piano, because you've got all of the resources of your computer, we can make a 250 megabyte sample gram piano. And the sound quality is really outstanding. And there's some other instruments too. We've got other synthesizers. We have something called the Acoustica Instruments, which is a collection of hundreds and hundreds of different sounds, everything from blues to uh, drum kits and, uh, and, and more synthesizers and just an amazing collection of tones. Uh, so anyway, with Mixcraft and an inexpensive keyboard, you have any sound that you can dream of. Uh, no special, by the way, just so you know, no special hardware. This is a, an off-the-shelf Dell laptop. Uh, I'm not using any special sound card. Everything you hear is coming out of a built-in sound card. Uh, and I'm running in Vista, as you can tell by the gigantic window symbol in the corner. Um, so, I can take anything like, uh, well, we'll take my piano and I'll, I'll hit the arm button. Every track has an arm button and if I hit it, it means I want to record on that track. And then I hit the record button and I can play. 